Good morning, intuitives, and happy Mother's Day to those of you that watch this channel that are mothers. Hopefully your kids aren't being cheap today. I'm not. I have to go pick up a very expensive uh, bouquet of yellow roses here very shortly for my mother, which will catch her off guard. So that's her favorite flower. Figured it'd be a good gift, especially considering that she's trying to sell her house and thus get rid of things. She doesn't need something that'll eventually have to end up in a moving truck in the not so distant future. So, that aside, the topic of my video today uh, ties in with something important to the current climate as the American midterm elections loom closer. And I'm tying it into, you know, my INFJ or more broadly speaking, intuitive theme, and that is, why do, does politics need INFJs and ENFJs to step up into politics and assume the necessary roles that intertwine between the two of us, but that are both different, and I just realized that I definitely didn't take my Allegra this morning, because I'm down in the dusty basement, the only place where it's quiet, and my nose is acting up again. So, please ignore that. I know it's unprofessional, but I'm not a professional at this. So, you know, there's several reasons why INFJs and ENFJs should go into politics, and there's reasons why we don't. So, starting with INFJs, you know, politics, the idea of being able to make a difference, to help people in need, to uphold some semblance of you know, meritocracy and integrity and do the right thing and hold others accountable and call out, you know, corruption and nepotism and take on the old boys club. Sounds very appealing to many INFJs. This one, in fact. I did get in, involved in politics very young. In fact, I was on and off throughout the past, I don't know, 15-ish years. I was the Democratic committee man of the township I reside in in Pennsylvania, which ain't saying much, it's predominantly Republican, you know, I, I, I ran out of foes, <laughs> somebody had to do it, and one of my mentors um, in the political scene is a uh, older, older woman, boomer age, she's a uh, successful lawyer, and also a witch, ironically enough, and she talked me into it, because essentially they needed to fill the position, and I was you know, more her protege and sidekick instead of, uh, you know, a full-fledged committee man. And the Republican committee woman was one of my best friend's mothers, and the Republican committee man was actually a, uh, a neighbor of mine and also sort of a mentor. He was a, a, a lieutenant of detectives at one of the local police departments, so... To his credit, you know, he was like an old school cop, like think like the revolver era, like didn't like the the paramilitary nature of what police work had become. He was, you know, like an 80s type detective, and also he was a, um, you know, a reasonable guy politically. He was very much a, like an old school uh, East Coast moderate Republican, think like Arlen Specter or... I guess the best example that most people would be familiar with would be, you know, George Herbert Walker Bush, a.k.a. Bush 41, and he didn't like the direction that the party went the, thereafter with Newt Gingrich and his contract for America, which was the Reagan Revolution 2.0, but I digress from that. So, those are some reasons why an INFJ would want to get involved in politics, especially a young INFJ, because it's like, all I have to do is play by the rules and do the right thing and put myself out there, which is fucking terrifying, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's for the greater good. Well, you know, when you're that young, you don't realize just how corrupt the game is and how much corruption, nepotism, cronyism, and old boys club bullshit exists within it. That being said, INFJs certainly do have a role within politics, a role we need to embrace and... You know, in a way, we are probably the second best suited people to do it. 
second to ENFJs, and I'll get to their role, which is a little bigger than our role in all this, but INFJs need to get involved. We need to overcome the introversion that we have because, you know, in a lot of ways, an INFJ would get involved in politics for the right reason because the INFJ would truly believe in something and would want to bring that to fruition. And given that most of us are driven by wanting to help people and that idealistic nature of making, you know, uh, a better reality possible and not just being like, well, the status quo is what it is and you just have to accept that and you can do minor tweaks around the edges. No, 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 no. So, you know, to give an INFJ example, and I've been pushing him on his channel to try to do this for years, uh, Kyle Kalinske, you know, from Secular Talk and another INFJ my age, he'd be a great guy to get into politics. He, you know, he has a political science uh, degree been a political commentator for over a decade people know who the fuck he is so i've i've put many comments and he's even commented about it you know a handful of times on his show because i got a lot of the other people to help comment with it is we tried in 2016 to start pushing him to primary chuck schumer in 2022 he's not doing it but i think he'd be the ideal person to do it because you know, to that point, an INFJ can stand up to, you know, the old boys club. Like, we don't care what they think of us. Like, we're the type that's like, do the right thing, stick to your integrity, you know, damn the consequences, not one step backwards. You know, you try to burn me to the ground and I'll expose every secret you have because I can see right through you. Nancy. <laughs> that kind of thing. And that would be the role of, you know, the INFJ that, that they need to embrace and run for political office. The uncorruptible one who isn't, you know, who, being introverted, isn't doing it for the spotlight, doesn't, you know, have greed, so wouldn't be motivated by all, all that sweet, sweet kickbacks. <laughs> and not to mention all the tail you get. <laughs> all right. Kind of thing. Like... That guy, you know, that very slick guy, and his willy. He's motivated, his willy points him in different directions. But anyway, so that's another reason why, you know, INFJs would be an ideal person to get into politics because we're, you know, while well, everybody has a human nature and everybody can be corrupted under the right conditions, it is harder to corrupt. An INFJ because we hold ourselves to such a higher standard than we hold everybody else and we already have enough self-loathing so selling out would just make us hate ourselves even more and we don't need that on top of everything else we deal with being these alien-like creatures now that being said you know am I saying oh an INFJ would make a great president no no not really because being president means you got to be in the spotlight all the time. And while INFJs can handle the spotlight, you know, in short bursts or, you know, like be the number two in the spotlight next to a more important person and backing them up as their attack dog, being like the head person in the spotlight all the time. Yeah, we're not really cut out for that. That'll, that'll burn us out pretty quick, probably. You know, although the... the the debating part, we're, we're good at that, you know. If there's anybody who can match wits in a debate with the smugness of the ENTP, with facts and logic, and call them out on their hypocrisy, it's us. I learned that a long time ago. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with an ENTP celebrity at a party once. I only met him the one time. He's a jerk. I wanted to take a swig at him, but I digress. 2008, a long time ago. But, you know, any, uh, an INFJ... Would their natural role be the presidency? No, but I will tell you where, you know, this country, speaking about the United States, would be a much better place with an INFJ in a high position of power, and that is Speaker of the House. The INFJ's natural place in politics would be Speaker of the House because we would be able to corral groups together. We would be able to call people out on their corruption, you know, just rail on the house floor about you're bought by big oil, you're bought by big tobacco, you're owned by Wall Street, you did this, you know, you're, you know, you're overlooking this crime, and you're going to fall in line and vote for the, and do the right thing this time, or I'm going to expose all of it, and then you'll get primaried and your cushy life is over, so fall in line. 
kind of thing. We'd be really good at that. Because Speaker of the House, they're sort of in the spotlight, but not all the time. You know, their main job is to, you know, essentially unite different factions of a nominally same group of people together. And yeah, we're INFJs, we're, uh, we're, we're pretty good at that. There's good examples of that in both uh, real life and fictional representations of INFJs, which are often romanticized. Anyway, so that would be the INFJ's role in politics. And we have another one, but I'll get to it after. Because now we're going to talk about ENFJ's role in politics and why they need to get more involved. Well, ENFJs are probably the best people to get involved in politics because ENFJs, they're extroverts. They're very likable. They're, you know, they seem very non-threatening because many ENFJs are like very quirky and dorky and they make everything look cute. That's just their superpower. Ours is to see through people. But, you know, they just seem, you know, they're just very likable, charismatic people and it's very hard for most reasonable people to attack them with any merit because they're, for the most part, such sweethearts. Obviously, there's outliers in every group. There's evil ENFJs, there's evil INFJs. You know, a certain Austrian guy comes to mind that everybody likes to bring up as him being an INFJ. You know, he was also mentally ill, by the way. You know, it's like, but INF Hitler was an INFJ, so therefore INFJs are like Hitler. It's like, Maybe it was the syphilis. I think he had other issues as well. Anyway, so ENFJs can handle being in the spotlight. You know, they're very charismatic. They bring people together very well. And like INFJs, they are, you know, very hard to corrupt. They're very driven by integrity and stick to their principles and are willing to put their career and their well-being on the line to do the right thing like INFJs and, you know, people may be a little less hesitant to attack them because they're so likable and charismatic. However, they have a fatal flaw. The ENFJ fatal flaw is they struggle very much to say no, especially to, you know, um, superiors of theirs in a workplace setting or, you know, like a old boys club establishment. Like they have a hard time saying no when they're con essentially confronted with the idea of, you can't say no, this is the way it is, it's tradition, and you must fall in line or all will be lost to you, kind of thing. And a great example of that would be AOC. AOC is an ENFJ, and, you know, she struggles to stand up to Pelosi and the Democratic establishment and do the right thing at times. Like, I don't know, like convincing the whole squad to endorse... Nina Turner for Congress instead of backing Chantel Brown, who, who was, you know, she was in the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Yeah, in name only. You know, she she's also in the, the New Democrat Caucus, like me. And that's the group she actually works with, and that's where her ideology lies. So, you know, again, INFJs wouldn't do that. They don't care what the old boys club thinks. Anyway. And that's why the two are needed together. You know, the ENFJs have the charisma and can handle the spotlight. And they need the INFJs. I mentioned before, it's kind of their lieutenants whispering in their ear like, you can say no, this person's corrupt. I see right through them. This is what you say back to them. And then we go back to the, back to the shadows kind of thing. But these two personalities together, along with other intuitive types, in politics for the right reasons and not in there for their own career or fame or lust for power. Because let's be honest, politics is one of the biggest careers a narcissist will be drawn to, especially a megalomaniac, because it's money and power, money and power, money and power. And depending on who you are in politics, potentially fame and title. But kind of thing. So there is that to worry about. It's a very corrupting environment. Um, so it would be hard for most people to, you know, stick to their principles and actually do the thing they were put in office to do. But I believe if anyone can do it, it's INFJs and ENFJs. So this is a nobody INFJ sigma demisexual male who's also a witch trying to give a rally cry to my brothers and sisters, you know, in the NFJ personality types, the two sides of the intuitive coin to, if 
they had any inkling, you know, and they want to make the world a better place, and they feel like they could, you know, get involved in politics. And obviously it takes time to start at the state level, you know. Um, a great rising star in the progressive movement in my home state, who I'm an acquaintance with, also in ENFJ, would be our state senator, Katie Muth, and she does a pretty good job at standing up to the, you know, the old boy Republican boomers in Harrisburg. So remember, you know, if you want to get involved in politics, you're going to, you know, start at the state level. It takes time to make the world a better place. Yeah, I know for INFJs, all or nothing kicks in. It's like, well, I won't be able to get that much done anyway, so, you know, why bother? Well, yeah, maybe you by yourself, but if we get a couple dozen more of you, then you can, you know, form a coalition. Really what it takes is, INFJs and ENFJs who want a progressive movement, we need to be able to control 10% of the vote. If we can block together, if you can get like a third party to get 10% of the vote, or a true progressive faction of the Democratic Party that no matter what isn't going to fall in line behind the new Democrats then the rest of the party will have to concede to some of what we're trying to do because if we hold 10% of the vote, they have no chance of beating the Republicans without us. You know, I say we go the Ross Perot route and go third party at this point because the Democratic Party is, in my opinion, firmly stuck in the year 1992 and you know won't be changing anytime soon until quite a few people die. That's my little rant about why INFJs and ENFJs should get involved in politics and throw ourselves into that corrupting fire. But we are the people who, you know, put our own well-being on the line for the betterment of the world and to help others. So, you know, trust your intuition if you feel you're called to that fight. And if you get in, don't sell out your integrity no matter what they're offering.